what I think about life. Um, above all, I, I live life and I don't think much about it. But I mean, if I put myself a philosopher's hat on, I think about life. And uh, maybe the best way to describe how I think about life is to make a contrast between two distinctions. You know, those people who like the word ethics and talk ethics all the time, they make a distinction between the good life and the bad life. I mean, the good life, not in the sense that you're enjoying your life, but the life, the correct life, the life as you have to lead it, you make right ethical decisions, as opposed to an irresponsible life, a life that doesn't care about others, and so forth, and so forth. It would be a bad life. Um, and in a text that I like a lot, and that is Rameau's nephew by Diderot, uh, there's this character, Rameau's nephew, who is the 18th century equivalent to what today would be a homeless person. And he at some point says, uh, oh, you know, one of my role models, he doesn't say role model, is Diogenes. So this is the cynical tradition. And he says they make a different distinction. Their distinction is um, between living or not living. Yeah? Uh, so and I want to live my life above all. I want to live my life intensely. And for me, yes, um, this distinction between being either dead or alive or having a life that is an anodyne life, a life that has no intensity and an intense life, that would be the cynical tradition. Yeah? I mean, so um, while I wouldn't call myself cynical in the everyday sense uh, uh, of the word, but I like this distinction more, this distinction matters more to me. So uh, the word intensity is a word that without any intention I use a lot. So what does intensity mean? I mean, intensity in a, in a way is a quantifier. I mean, uh, you live certain feelings with a greater intensity. It's a magnifier. I mean, you feel that certain um, vibrations permeate uh, your existence. And I certainly like that. And recently, as you know, I mean, reading Nietzsche's uh, Zarathustra, I have been very impressed by this uh, concept of the will to power, which counter to a very common misunderstanding has nothing to do with intentions to political power, something like that. I think what Nietzsche means by the will to power, he uses will in the sense of Schopenhauer, is a certain energy that is impersonal, it's not somebody's energy, a certain energy, a certain surge that you feel, and I like this Nietzschean metaphor there, uh, this energy that, that works like a wind and you want to get this wind into your sail. Yeah? So for example, in my profession, uh, when I'm surrounded by interesting people, I'm surrounded by interesting graduate students, and I think your cohort, the present group of graduate students here in our departments, is very, very good. So I like to have this or to let this intensity, I like to let this quote-unquote will to power uh, intensify my own life yeah? and uh, I'm enjoying my life when it is intense so I feel I'm yeah people say oh you're overworked and how can you sleep so little well because I'm enjoying that yeah? and I'm enjoying being challenged and actually I would say a good life is not necessarily can be very successful but it doesn't depend on that yeah? a good life in the sense of intensity I mean not in the ethical sense a good life in Nietzschean sense can completely include defeats, but at any moment uh, of your life uh, you feel there's something at stake, uh, you feel inspired. I mean, a very old-fashioned way um, in Castilian uh, to say that is, I mean, at age 60, almost 69, I would say, he vivido mucho. The concept that has fascinated me the most in my life and you know, in a way, I don't know whether this is really a question for me, but if ever somebody asked me, is there a concept you would like to be remembered for or with, is the concept of presence. I mean, uh, I wanted to say something different, something more original, because yes, lots of people do associate me with presence. But for an academic life, it reminds me of my former colleague, the, the theorist of history, Hayden White, who had this uh, idea that writing history is really like li writing literature, it's not objective. And that made him famous with this book from 1973, Meta History. And uh, he self-ironically once said, uh, I had but one good idea in my life, but hey, most people have none. 
So maybe I had but one good idea in my life, and that was the concept of presence. And you know, compared to those who have never had any good idea, that's not so bad. I mean, I wish I had a real good new idea every day or every week or every year, but maybe presence is indeed central, and I have to resign myself. It's presence, okay? So um, with apologies for the lack of originality. Now, in presence, in what sense? I mean, presence not in a temporal sense, um, but uh, presence in the original Latin sense of preesse. I mean, it's a spatial sense. Something is in front of me, like you are in front of me, or like this camera is in front of me now. I mean, presence in the sense of tangibility. So um, this watch is present, or these glasses are present because I can easily touch them. But presence also and above all, and that's not unrelated to the spatial concept, um, in the sense of a person comes into your office, or a person comes into a classroom, a person comes, uh, you know, steps on the soccer field, or American football field, and they say, oh my God, this person has a lot of presence. Yeah? Or, you know, you see that in the Oscar Awards. I mean, all the actors try hard to have presence, and some have it, and others don't have it. And uh, however hard they, they are trying. Yeah? Um, now, uh, if I ask myself this question, which probably is a typical question for somebody at age, I mean, his 69th year of his life, uh, what would I like to be remembered for? And as I'm going to retire, not, no longer be in this office within next year and a half, um, it would be this dimension of presence. Yeah? I mean, yes, you know, you, I mean, in academic life, especially in humanities, you write your share of books. Uh, you have a share of uh, a number of people who have yet advised and had successful academic or other careers. Um, but if the memory would be um, when you entered this room, you felt there were vibes, it was inspiring, or this guy was captivating, you couldn't quite tell why, not so much because of what he had read and because of what he said, but, but he had this aura, he had this presence. Uh, that is something uh, I would enormously like, uh, not the least because um, <coughs> I feel in an age um, that is clearly dominated not only here in Silicon Valley but worldwide by electronic communication. Uh, this is a quality, a positive quality of human life in the way we talked about life before. Uh, that is clearly, an, you know, a threatened species. I mean, this might this might disappear, because if you constantly communicate with people by distance, yeah, and I recently heard and I found that fascinating, that today professional athletes on the same team, let's say soccer players in the locker room, they communicate by their cell phones. Yeah, they don't talk to each other, and I find this very strange that the coach does not communicate by cell phone. Now, in such an age, uh, I think that uh, presence phenomena um, are in short supply. Uh, I think uh, that they are something that makes our lives, again, more intense, better, more enjoyable to live. Um, and, you know, I don't want to be remembered as the last person in this building here at Stanford who had presence, but if people after my retirement, for example, would miss my presence. Uh, that would be terrific. I mean, you also think, you know, my family. So one day I'm dead and gone. I have four children and a couple of grandchildren. Um, I wouldn't care much to be remembered for achievements and all those boring books that I've written. But if they say there's something lacking, because you had a presence, and in, in a way a presence what the French called also in the 17th century a je ne sais quoi. It's very difficult to define. You cannot define it cannot get your mind around it, but it is appealing, it is attractive, it is fascinating. No fascination means originally paralysis of your eyes. You have to look at that. I would be very happy. And uh, as I will not see how I will be remembered, uh, I try to talk myself into the illusion that yes, I do have presence.